really more into the dark. Um, so um, um, I'm really delighted to be part of this exhibition. Um, this piece I have, I'm showing two different works. So you're sort of seeing the second work um, first. Um, this work is inspired by um, Ruth Asawa and her technique of metal, um, metal working. So uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with that style of work. Um, when I was first invited to be part of this exhibition by Sharon and um, Kevin, it was literally one week before um, Shelter in Place. And they had just initially said, you know, we have this idea for an exhibition um, dedicated to uh, Ruth Asawa and her legacy. And so I started thinking about how I might want to um, um, honor um, the process um, and that her, her process making. But now I'm noticing that the first video is on, so I'm gonna talk about this one first, and then I'll talk about the next one. So um, this one is called On the Line, and um, it is an experimental film that is inspired by um, Japanese American women cannery workers from the 1930s in San Diego. Um, you may know that um, Japanese Americans in general brought um, the the technique of um, bamboo um, fishing um, to the West Coast, which enabled the, the American fishing companies to uh, catch tuna, large tuna. Before that, um, American companies were only using nets, and so they're catching things like sardines. Um, so Japanese American men would go out to sea for several weeks at a time, and they're um, catching these huge tuna, and then the women would live in these very um, meager housing shelters on the docks you know, this fish camp. And then during the day, and sometimes in the middle of the night, they would work in the cannery on the assembly line. Um, and the women from Japan and women from Mexico were given the most dirty work in, on the assembly line. So they were interacting with fish guts and their, their clothes were always covered with muck and those sorts of things. Um, and um, I found out about this one particular woman who owned a diner, a small restaurant, that was between Fish Camp and the cannery. It was the only building in the surrounding area. And she was quite distinctive. Her name was Issa Shimoda. Um, she was masculine in appearance. She um, was a specialist in the art of naginata which is a, a martial art form practiced by women in Japan that involves a large stick with a knife at the end. Um, and she actually performed in the World's Fair Expo in San Diego, um, I believe. And um, uh, challenged men to sword fights, but um, apparently didn't always win. Um, <laughs> and um, so she's, She's distinctive for her sort of, I, what I think of as butchness or at least gender nonconformity. Um, when she was incarcerated um, uh, by the US government, um, she actually has two sets of wartime records, one identifying her as female and one identifying her as male. Now, I don't think that she um, thought of herself as transgender in the way that we think of that today. Um, I do think that her gender nonconformity might have been um, interpreted or read as male. Um, and so it was in the exit interview that she was identified as male. And if you think about how people are interviewed in person, if you think you know their gender, you're not going to ask them, what is your gender? Right? You're just going to check the box. So that's sort of my theory about how that happened. But to me, um, learning about her and her story was really exciting to just think of someone who was gender nonconforming or non-binary or masculine center or any of those sorts of things. So I started to think about her restaurant as this place where women could go, um, they could relax, they could enjoy sake and, um, and dance perhaps with each other, perhaps have crushes on each other. Um, and um, at the same time, um, you know, with the acknowledgement that their entire lives were surrounded both by water 
And when they were on the assembly line, they, the, the sounds of the, the, the machinery would literally become part of their body. So to me, this film is about trying to capture what I call the space of queer inhabitants, or um, capture the, the, the sensibility that is the, the sights, the smells, the sounds of what it might have been like in the 1930s. Um, and to make this film, um, I visited um, the Japanese American Historical Society, where um, Issa Shimoda's collection resides. Um, I visited the sites of the canneries. I also shot a bunch of footage um, at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. I went to fish markets. I bought a lot of um, uh, fish things and I, I, I slid them down glass and shot it from below. Um, and then I also used archival footage from the Center for Asian American Media's home movie collection. So they have this incredible home movie collection um, of uh, a lot of different Asian Americans, and they um, allow artists to use that footage in their own artistic practices. So most of the footage that you see of um, the men fishing or hear the women laughing um, is all from that footage. And the other thing I did for the first time was I shot with a Bolex camera to do 16 millimeter film, and if you see these kind of these sort of strange art things, these light flashes that are coming across. Um, that's um, the result of a hand processing technique. So I, uh, I developed the film in my bathroom, uh, in the tub, um, but using um, this method called jam it in the can, where you take the film out of the camera, you rumple it up into a ball, you jam it into a metal can, you pour all the um, chemicals in, and you shake it up, and then it actually creates these kind of artifacts, or these like glitches on the, the film surface. Um, and so I was really interest, I'm interested in how glitches um, sort of um, are another way of reminding us of, of the kind of um, fissures or gaps in memory and history. Um, and, um, and so that's what that film was about. And then now we're back <laughs> to the liar sculptures. Um, so I, um, my ambition was to try to teach myself um, Ruth Nassau's um, metalworking technique. And I, um, I, it was good that the, the exhibition was delayed because I actually had three and a half years, uh, <laughs> two and a half years to work on that. Um, so I, I taught myself by using very simple hobby wire. You know, Ruth Asawa used a lot of really heavy um, wire that could hold its shape, and I was using very thin wire that doesn't hold its shape very well. Um, and I started to think about um, her forms, but I was also thinking about the forms of fish, and fish drying, and the, the form of an abstracted tuna, for instance. So I, um, I arrived at this form, which I think of as, um, as, as a fish form. It also could be a teardrop. Um, and um, over the summer, um, I, I had made about 400 of these. Um, and I had the great fortune of working in this gallery um, in the, the few weeks that it was closed. And I installed um, uh, the wire forms. Um, and then was able to video them. And, um, and then what you're seeing here is, um, is the image inverted. So you're seeing um, you know, it, it was black wire or silver wire um, shot um, with light. Um, and I reversed the image so that you would see a kind of ghostly presence of, of white light. Um, and um, so this is on a, it's about three minutes worth, and you know, the idea was that maybe you would encounter it, and it would look like a still image, but then you might notice um, some slight movement, um, and it might resonate with some of the other imagery that you saw in the film. And then this one, oh, you're seeing it right when my cat is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, apparent. So this uh, one is actually, um, I have these pieces also in my house, um, and um, the, what you're seeing is shadows of the sculptures 
um, that are um, cast onto a, a wall. Um, and the, the color of that imagery is from the sunset. So the oranges and the blurriness, it's sort of clouds passing across the light and then the sunset. And then I have a mischievous cat who <laughs> likes to interact with artworks and so jumped up and walked across and so you're sort of seeing that. Okay, so I think that's it. And so now we're back at the beginning of the So anyways, I just again want to thank you. Um, thanks, Sharon and Kevin.